It's Sean Lamb here for Streaming Media Producer at NAB 2018. I'm here with Dan from Black Magic Design, and we're, we're here to talk about the Black Magic Television Studio Pro 4K. Is yep, that right? That's correct. It's a big name, but it is a great product that we're happy to be showing here at the NAB show. If you're familiar with our ATEM Television Studio HD, really wildly popular product. It was really our first kind of ATEM to be able to have the integrated ability to have the panel as well as the ATEM all in one unit. Of course it was HD only and it was something that we thought was really affordable and great for people to get into having that single unit that able to do kind of everything for them. This is kind of the next step in that process for us with obviously adding the Ultra HE capability. So right off the bat for basically $600 more, being able to do 4K as well as HD. And if it was just that, you'd say, well, maybe I'm only doing HD and that's not something I need, but we've done so much more with this unit. Now, obviously it's Ultra HD, so we didn't want to just do HDMI. It's got eight 12 gig SDI inputs, as well as eight 12 gig SDI outputs. Because of course, if I'm going to be feeding a bunch of Ursa broadcast cameras, I want that program out to go back to those cameras so I can do all that CCU control, tally, back to the camera. So it was important for us to get all those SDI ins and outs on there. Okay, so 12G SDI, what resolution frame rate does that support? Yeah, so the big thing on there is that allows us to go up to the Ultra HD 60 frames per second. So we want to be able to have the full bandwidth there. And again, if you're only doing HD, that's still fine. You can do that all over the SDI as well. But we want to have the full capabilities for Ultra HD in there as well. So that was really important to us to get off the ground. But on top of all of that, each one of those inputs has an up-down cross converter on there. And that's something that we've never done in an ATEM before. All of our ATEMs have always had to be set at the same frame rate and resolution at the same time. So if you're going to use an HD 1080i camera, they all have to be HD 1080i sources. If you're going to do a uh, 720p, yet they'll all be 720p. So this is the first time every one of those has an up-down cross converter. So now we're starting to say, well, look, maybe I am that streamer that has this you know one or two HD cameras but I want to go buy one of the black magic ultra HDs as a sources maybe I'm using a computer as an output resolution that isn't your kind of standard video resolution now this can go ahead and take all of those imports just make it work into the project settings you have and have that go right out of the gate. So that's another huge feature for it. It's also a big pain point from previous switcher models and, and a lot of other things out there, right? Is just mixing and matching is, is pretty much a requirement nowadays because of the variety of sources that are coming in. That's right. Um, and it's a, it's a challenge when you're going out and you're saying, look, I have older things and I want to do your things. Like in a perfect world, yes, we'd love everyone to go out and buy eight new Blackmagic cameras and use all <laughs> them. But the practicality of it is that you have to go ahead and use the tools that you already have, add other tools in and use non-video standards like some PTZ cameras or laptops that may output a non-standard video resolution. So a really big improvement or an upgrade to an already existing unit that was already fantastic. I understand on the audio side, through some acquisitions and a bit of innovation and new features, there, there's some advancements in the audio side. So tell me a bit about that. Yeah, one of the big things that happened over the last year was we had made an acquisition to Fairlight. And Fairlight is a really high-end audio post-production kind of software-hardware combination. This is a type of tool that you would use to do audio sweetening and compression posing for films and, and all the kind of audio you do for television and film. But of course they have that robust library and capabilities that was just sitting there waiting for us to use in other implementations as well. And that was something we were able to move to the Fairlight, uh, move from Fairlight into the ATEM software as well. So now being able to have this ATEM software, not only just being able to do a couple of sliders and being able to adjust the audio, but being able to do things like take a stereo or a single channel audio and turn it into a stereo audio, have all of the equalizers that were known in Fairlight and being able to bring those tools directly into ATEM. It's all about giving people more flexibility and more capability and being able to do that for, again, a really modest upgrade in the price to get all of those tools in one solution. Yeah, because I mean, these are things that it's nice that if you're able to do on an external solution and patch it in, but if getting it all in, in this one little form factor here with manual controls, physical buttons you can you can push a uh, T-bar slider here. I mean, it's just, it's a really neat package. We want to make sure we give everyone the tools they need, even if they don't need it. But there's so many times where you run in and you say like, man, if I could only just delay that one channel of audio a second or a couple of frames. You know, these are the kind of things that as we've been able to build through the software and implement new hardware, we're able to kind of tuck these in as we go. So we're really pleased to be showing it at the show this year and have a lot of excited customers to be playing with it out on the show floor. Now, one of the other features too that, that comes over from the Pro HD uh, switcher is 
this wheel up here, and, and what does this guy do? Yeah, the big thing that we wanted to be able to do was give some more of that actual color shading control capabilities, right? We obviously have another one of our big IP technologies with DaVinci Resolve, so being able to include some of that Resolve color grading directly into our live production switchers. So not just going out and saying, oh look, I can you know make an adjustment to a red channel or a blue channel, but giving people the tactile controls that they're accustomed to from a actual color shader, which of course is why we also have our CCP controller, where we're also showing up the show floor to have that hardware tactile, which can be added onto any of the ATEMs as well to be able to do things like color shading our URSA cameras. And that's a great capability for people to be able to get in and start learning that was never available to them at this kind of a price point product. All right. Thank you very much, Dan. This has been Sean Lamb at NAB 2018. We're looking at some of the Black Magic solutions, more solutions that are part of the end-to-end -end workflows that you guys are now enabling. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.